going on YouTube? Uh, welcome back to uh, another installment on this uh, this little adventure we're on. I hope everybody is having a great day. Um, <clears throat> before we get into today's, into today's topic, uh, I want to sweep up a couple house cleaning items. Uh, one is, believe it or not, I'm actually getting a couple messages here and there on my other videos. Uh, people contacting me, asking me for more elaborate um, videos of um, riding. <clears throat> things like uh, multiple camera angles, you know, different things like that. But the thing about that is I've only got one GoPro, you know, and then I have this camera, but um, I don't want to be one of those guys that just goes sprinting down the trail or the dune just holding a camera in his hand and you can't see anything because the thing is bouncing all over the place and you end up with more of a headache than an an enjoyable ride along um, so I don't want I'm not gonna use this camera and I'm all about you know camera angles and, and trying to get creative I mean it actually sounds kinda fun you know I might actually try and you know kinda turn this channel into like a vlog type thing you know like an, an adventure vlog um, but the, the thing about that is those cameras are not they're not cheap um, the GoPro that I would look at would be the GoPro 5, um, the black one, that has GPS on it. Uh, and I say that because the GPS one, you can put the gauges over top of the, uh, the image. So it tells you like how fast you're going and um, kind of maps out your track and uh, keeps track of data like that. And I think that would be kind of cool, you know, to kind of have you know like that GPS app that I was using to measure 0 to 60 time um, be like that you know telling me how fast I'm going you know like at a particular time uh, so if you guys are interested you know and you like the stuff I'm doing you know and you, you want to kind of support just click that subscribe button you know I mean I'm at like what 160 subscribers right now you know so if we could get it up I mean 300, 350 subscribers, you know, maybe I'll invest in that other camera, you know, maybe I'll try and expand what I'm doing here, you know, if the audience is enjoying what's happening and um, there's some interest in it. So yeah, uh, that's my challenge to you guys. If you want to support, you know, if you're interested in what I'm doing, um, just hit that subscribe button and uh, let me know and um, I'll make some uh, additional investments into how I capture my rides. <clears throat> and the other housekeeping item is I keep talking about, you know, this adventure that I'm going on, you know, and it's it's not far off and all this. Well, it's not far off because next weekend, the first weekend of April, um, the dunes here in Michigan open up. It's opening weekend at Silver Lake. Uh, and the adventure begins. Um, you're damn right I'm not gonna miss that uh, so I'll be out there for sure um, I'll be bringing you guys along with me uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a good time so keep a look out for that uh, there should be a more steady stream of footage coming in at that point uh, so after the last video when I did my 0 to 60 I quickly realized that traction is gonna be an issue hooking up is an issue it's it was uh, actually challenging to hook up on pavement so I can only imagine how sand would be so with that realization we went and got us some sand tires um, I picked those up today they are uh, carbon fiber beadlock uh, wheels with sand king 14 paddle rubber and up there we got the four point safety harnesses um, passenger side driver side and a spare belt and uh, the Michigan tags, the trail and ORV tags. So this video is going to kind of be a, uh, I, I don't want to call it a how to because I don't know how to do it, <laughs> but I'm going to record it um, and maybe show you guys, how, provided I can manage to figure it out, how to put the four point harnesses in. Um, I don't 
if, if I had to guess, I just don't think it's going to be that hard, which is why I'm going to try and do this one myself. Um, and then we're going to put the wheels on, and we're going to see if we if it fits on the trailer <laughs> with the wheels because um, the machine is relatively wide as it is and my trailer is 80 inches which means if I get the the car right in the middle uh, you know I got four inches available on either side so with the paddles on there I'm hoping you know that it only increases it by about two to three inches on either side and I can squeak them on uh, because if not I'm gonna have to get a mobile jack um, and maybe an impact or something to pop those wheels on once I get up to the dunes, which I don't want to do it that way, but you got to do what you got to do. Um, so yeah, um, if you're enjoying this kind of stuff, if you want to see more, um, hit that subscribe button, you know, let me know. And uh, I'll start making some investments into bringing you guys some higher quality um, adventures. Maybe even like a drone or something, you know, to follow me around while I'm running. Uh, who knows? Um, it's really it's up to you guys. If this stuff is interesting to you, let me know. Um, and we'll try to make it as big as we can. Um, on to the, uh, the install. All right. All right. <clears throat> so the first, first thing is these seats. I'm starting with the passenger side first because I believe... It, might be a little easier because it doesn't have any electronics tucked up to it. Um, so yeah, these seats in the Maverick are just Velcroed in. They just uh, pop right out. So you can just take him off. Um, and then you've got these four bolts here, which will release the seat from the chassis. It won't release the frame, um, or the, uh, the actual bolting mechanism that holds it to the frame. It'll just take the bucket off the frame which is good because we don't want to take the whole frame out um, but in order to get the bucket off you've got the seat selector here the um, range selector there's no way to get it through uh, this little plastic piece um, there's it's just I don't I don't know and I mean you could get down underneath here and probably unhook it but I don't want to deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take a piece of a wire cutter or a, um, some wire cutters and I'm just going to make a little snip right through here which will allow me to drop this down through uh, without breaking my, my wrists trying to uh, excuse me, get under there and undo that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that real quick and then um, we'll be back. So once you get that out of the way um, you're gonna have there is here we go right here this goes through the seat here um, like this which makes it very difficult to get the seat out but it's alright because you're gonna have to take this off anyways so on the inside of this bracket here there is a bolt to loosen that bolt in order to get the bottom of the uh, OEM seat belt off and then you can pull it up through the seat and then you can get the seat out of the car oh yeah. there now, what are we looking at? So, looks like in order to get the OEM uh, seat belt lock out, uh, unless you guys got some way of getting in there and getting this bolt off, looks like we might have to loosen up this uh, the mounting bracket for the entire seat frame lift it up a little bit to get to this to get this off that'll get that off and then there's a pretty easy one up here to get the top of this off and with those off we should be able to start installing the four point harnesses so let's try and get those off 
pro tip. So, on this top one here, you can't just wrench on it because there's a nut on the other side, which is hidden by this piece of plastic that has a star hex nut in it. So, pop that off, exposing the nut, which will allow you to get that off. Otherwise, I'll sit there and wrench on it for three minutes like I was doing, wondering why it's not loosening up. <laughs> now, the next piece of shenanigan work is getting the seatbelt retractor out, which has a seemingly harmless bolt right there. However, there is a nut on the other side, naturally, which is around here. Uh, right there. <laughs> so deal with that as you will. All right, after we got that other piece off, sure enough, I just popped this bolt off. This whole piece just rocked right up. No big deal. Slid that nut off there. And then we got the seat belt lock off. Now, the OEM seat belt restraints have all been removed, all components. Which, just a couple of these sad little pieces. Now we're moving on to the four points. So I got the Can-Am official ones made for this machine. Um, came with its own hardware here, but at least on the bottom here, where they hook into where the um, seat mounts to the frame, I'm going to use the hardware that was in the machine because um, I know that that hardware is threaded properly um, for the bolt holes so I don't want to have to worry about cross threading I mean I'm sure these you know these work these ones right here well maybe I'll take a look at them I'll see how they feel because these have fresh Loctite on it which is always a good thing especially when dealing with seat belts um, yeah so we'll see how that looks but uh, let's get these guys in there Alright, I did end up going with the new hardware um, based on the new Loctite that's on there. Give you a nice little rubber spacer that it comes with too to keep it from slamming against there. Um, as well as this piece, the end bracket on the harness is a little thicker and that bolt has a little bit more of a spacer um, to allow a little more movement. So yeah, snap that in there, bolted this guy back down, obviously make sure this is facing the right way. Um, and I just realized that all of this has to go up through there. So I'm just going to roll the dice and hope that I can pull it up through there because I don't want to undo all that and then try to mount all that other stuff with the seat in there, you know, like run it through first and then mount it. So. I'm hoping that I can fish it up through and that it fits. I'm just going to go ahead and roll those dice. I guess we'll find out at the end of this video how that worked out. So now I'm going to take the other side, mount it here. Obviously, don't go mounting this up here just yet because it has to go through the seat. We'll do that once the seat is back in. It's going alright so far. So we'll get the other side in right here, put the seat back in and then mount the top up there. We should be done with one seat. Well, you saw it here first, so make sure you make a mental note of that before you go and do this. Um, they don't fit up through those holes like I thought they would, so I had to pull it back off. Stick this up here, run it through, which isn't really so bad because those straps are plenty long enough. You can just push the seat forward um, and then run all the connections there. So, now that we got this one on properly, I'm going to go ahead and run this one through, bolt her on, slide the seat back, and put the ones on the top. So, yeah, they don't fit through those holes. The seat has to be on, and you got to thread it through. Make a note of that. Alright, so we got that one through there. Up through here, and bolted right here. This is kind of an interesting one to, to work on because so close right here, 
and there's not a whole lot of room here to be turning a ratchet so patience patience let's put the other one on all right we got everything back in there so we uh, bolted those down nice and tight pop the seat back in put the uh, bolts in the bottom here back on put that guy back through the little slot there and we got one of the the harnesses in I guess that wasn't a terribly difficult endeavor so I'm going to repeat the process on that side and I will go ahead and flip the camera on when I encounter some of the electrical uh, pieces because obviously you guys know that the driver's seat has a kill switch or a, well, I call it a kill switch basically just cuts the power um, <clears throat> when the seat belt's not connected so you can't go anywhere so I'll go ahead and uh, snap a couple shots of that when I get there but other than that I'm guessing it should be the same as this one I like it alright so this one in here the only real difference between the passenger side and the driver's side is on the bottom of the seat belt lock there's this little blue connector here so you just pop this off business as usual and there we go harnesses on both sides Honestly, the install wasn't too complicated. <clears throat> I think uh, it's pretty straightforward, actually. And I like it. All right.